Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. So I got some fresh off the press intel for you, some before it's news that you're not going to hear anywhere else. So let's just get right to it. All right, so before we start this video, I got to say, if you see somebody impersonating me in the comment section, that's exactly what they're doing. If they're asking you for my what's up or your what's up information, do not respond. Do not go and give these people money through WhatsApp. It's a total scam. It's pretty darn obvious, but some people are falling for it, okay? Next little issue that makes me worry for a lot of people who watch this channel. I recently released a short video about Parapocalypse shoelaces, okay? They're these shoelaces that are like paracord, a lot thinner, so you can thread them through the grommets in your shoes, but they contain eight different inner threads, Kevlar, um, Dyneema, fishing line, that sort of stuff. You know what the number one comment on that video was? It's a dumb idea because what are you gonna do for shoelaces if you have to use the paracord? If you guys ever heard of something called functional fixedness, okay? There's eight inner strands inside the paracord. You take one of those little strands, you use it for your shoelaces, you can use the other eight strands for survival purposes. God, if the shizzy hits the fizzy, there's going to be some people with some problems, all right? Uh, what other stuff? Okay, there, I just want to touch on everything today. Guys, uh, I'm seriously looking at the price of gold right now. It's starting to go up just like I thought it would. If you look after the 2008 recession or, or market crash, housing crash, the price of gold skyrocketed over the next three years. I have a sneaking suspicion that that's going to happen right now. Also, I think that the price of oil and other fuels is about to go through the roof. If this thing goes down, like they're saying it's going to go down, then you are going to see the price of oil go a lot higher than it is right now. And isn't that going to be convenient for all those countries who sell oil? Hmm, interesting. Anyways, guys, we got some information that we want to share with you today. But before I get into that, I want to comment on this video that's been going viral around the internet of a police officer going to someone's house who participated in a Facebook group about the convoy protests, okay? They came to their home. This person hadn't committed any crimes, but they came to their home to deliver them some information on peaceful protest. Now, no matter what your stance on the convoy thing is, you gotta admit, that's a little bit weird, isn't it? When the government and corporations start to get together to work towards suppressing the people. Hmm. So before we get into the World War III stuff, we need to cover some other very important developments right now obviously you guys know the cpi came out a few days ago which is drastically underestimated and in a lot of people's opinions it's a very conservative number doesn't take into account which specific commodities are rising in price and those typically tend to be those fixed recurring expenses like groceries rent gasoline things of that nature but one warning i want to issue to people is about the price of food okay i was in a save on foods which is notoriously expensive okay but it was late at night it was the only place i had to go so forget about it so i went there i was looking at this thing of grapes and it was 12 bucks for a little container of grapes 12 dollars Canadian dollars, which are damn near at parity right now because the US dollar is sucking right now. So let's just say I can handle a half kilogram small container of grapes for $12. Let's just theoretically say I can handle that. The problem is, is that if the price of oil increases, what do we use oil for? Well, we use it to transport stuff. We use it to uh, sow seeds. We use it to harvest crops. We use it to manufacture and process and distribute goods across the land. Now, if we face more climactic turbulence this year as a result of drought and flooding, putting even more strain on the global food supply, we know that countries have been stockpiling food. Everything just maps on to the shizzy is going to royally hit the fizzy. And this is why this movement in the streets right now isn't just about what it's about. I believe that there's an underlying socioeconomic tension that is there, which is manifesting as this Occupy 2.0 situation where people are not going to be able to live off of the money that they are earning. And that is going to lead to some big, big problems. Now, we also know that chicken producers are warning about a fast spreading bird flu spreading across the US. US poultry producers are tightening safety measures for their flocks as disease experts warn that wild birds are likely spreading a highly lethal form of avian flu across the country. India on Wednesday reported highly pathogenic bird flu on a commercial turkey farm leading China, South Korea, and Mexico to ban poultry imports from the state. The outbreak put the U.S. industry on edge at a time that labor shortages are fueling 
food inflation. The disease is already widespread in Europe and affecting Africa, Asia, and Canada, but the outbreak in Indiana, which is in a migratory bird pathway, particularly rattled U.S. producers. A devastating U.S. bird flu outbreak in 2015 killed nearly 50 million birds, mostly turkeys, egg-laying chickens in the Midwest. The United States is the largest producer and second largest exporter of poultry meat. Now, if we were back in 2015 when none of this was going on, the system might have been resilient enough to just shake this off. But if we see another situation like that again, where the price of chicken is already sky high, I don't know what the, there was some sort of chicken shortage for the Super Bowl this weekend. Apparently the Super Bowl is something that people are still fixated on, paying $6,000 for parking spots. Like, God, man. Anyways, shit's going to get bad, okay? Shit is going to get really bad. So anyways, to the main story, uh, apparently the talks with Biden and Putin have failed, whatever that means. They talked for an hour, which doesn't seem that long, considering Putin and Macron talked for about six hours. And of course, uh, Biden and Putin talked on the phone, which is quite telling. Uh, Russia has now removed all of their diplomats from the Ukraine, as far as I know. And everybody knows by now that the U.S. has asked everybody to leave that country. Now, I must say that there are some voices on the ground in the Ukraine who are in disbelief. Now, I'm not sure if that's just a normalcy bias thing. And if people just don't want to believe that it's coming, there's some Americans who live in the Ukraine who happen to be YouTubers who are saying that it's all just media hype. But one Word of caution I want to issue to those people, and I'm not saying they're necessarily wrong. I'm just saying a word of caution would be that any country that was about to go to war would probably want their citizens to remain calm and wouldn't want them to necessarily believe that there was going to be a conflict, especially if they believed it was going to be a conflict that they were going to lose. And who knows what sort of political motives the leaders within that country, what sort of political game they're playing. Maybe they want the people to really feel like victims of something if it happens so they're not uh, ginning them up for war, okay? So who knows? That's all I'm saying is don't get so complacent. Yes, we obviously know that there's a lot of brinkmanship and saber rattling going on and there appears to be this push by various elements within NATO to trigger some sort of engagement there as much as you know we're hearing that it's about russia if you haven't seen my last videos on this topic please go and revisit them they'll explain a little bit about the situation now i want to share some emails because i know you guys are waiting for me to get to the emails so i'll just shut the hell up and read these emails uh, my name is such and such from croatia in a city within Croatia, I don't want to give too much information away. I follow your channel and I think it's very useful. I would like to support it by sharing with you information that could be useful to you as you've been dealing with topics mentioning Europe lately. The situation with the energy market has gone crazy. The price of gas has increased four times, electricity 150%. This is very true. This has been the case for several, several months now. One liter of gasoline is currently 1.9 USD. Okay, here in Canada, it's a buck 50 where I live. I'm sure in Vancouver and on some more of the coastal regions where they're far from the oil, it's going to be about two bucks. But $2 USD is about 260 Canadian. So they are approaching double what we are paying. Food has risen 30 to 40% and new price increases have been announced. A friend who has a shooting range has to close because of the lack of bullets. Now, one thing I want to say here, guys, I warned people a couple months ago that there was going to be 100 days to worldwide riots. Have you seen the news lately? Have you seen what's happening in France, in Germany, on the bridges between Canada and the United States? It's happening, guys. They're cracking down because they know that we are in for a shitstorm in the next couple of years. And uh, the only way you can manage a population that's going into a shitstorm is if you get everybody locked the hell down. People are divided into those who want to and those who don't want to be vaccinated. Well, what a surprise. The government wants to introduce compulsory vaccination and this will cause unrest. The army is doing exercises to prepare for a possible power outage as a result of high energy prices. The state's gas reserves are very small and there is talk that it may be barely enough for this winter. Well, this winter, thankfully, is starting to come to a close in some places. There is very little information. The situation in Ukraine is not mentioned in the news and this 
morning, 5,000 American soldiers arrived in the city of Split. No one knows why. 5,000? I don't know if that number is true, but in my last video that I just did, I was sent an email by a person who said, look, they're mobilizing a lot more forces than they are telling us in the media. And someone commented on that video, like, look, this is information we already have. We already knew that soldiers were going there. Yes, but what that person was saying is that they're sending a lot more troops than they are telling us. And this kind of corroborates this with that as anecdotal as it might be. My wife volunteers at a state protection and rescue administration. Tomorrow they have an emergency media in which they will deal with the topic of atomic weapons and how to act in situations after someone uses it. Everyone is talking about how the situation is extremely tense and they feel that something is wrong, but the media shows that everything is perfect and that we have no reason to worry. Is this not consistent with what we're seeing in the Ukraine right now. Think about it. I noticed that items in stores are missing. Battery, camping equipment, cans are arranged in one row so that people think it's not missing. But when you take one, you see that behind is an empty shelf. This person's first language is not English, so but I appreciate the, the email and the effort they put into this. There is no longer such a large selection of frozen food and meat. Parts for cars, IT equipment, and a product that you order from the internet, you wait three to four months. Oh, I know about that. Trust me. The salary of the average citizen is $950, which is not enough to live on. Dissatisfaction increases as tensions rise. I would like to thank you for the valuable knowledge you share with us on your channel, and I wish you success in your further work. Many greetings from Croatia. Thank you so much for taking the time to write this email. We truly appreciate it, and I hope that you and your family can stay safe. We are sending you positive, positive prepper vibes. And uh, by the sounds of things, you are already ahead of the curve if you're thinking that way. Okay, so let's just get to the next. So I got another email here about how Target's gonna be upping their prices right away. I'm not really gonna get into that one because it's really specific, but she talks about how uh, the prices at Target are gonna be going up 20%. I mean, I don't know if that's gonna be across the board thing. All I know is that the prices are going up like crazy. And if you can get physical stuff right now, that's really the, the best asset to have is stuff. There's been graphics cards. The, gra the price of graphics cards is not going down because of the whole Bitcoin thing and the chip shortage and all that. But even tech nowadays is an appreciating asset. What does that tell you about just the nature of the world that we're living in? That's crazy. So yeah, if you can get stuff, guys, I'm dead serious. Get it now. Get it while you can. We're not, we're not pissing around anymore. That money that you have is being devalued at a rapid rate. And now we're possibly going into a hyperinflationary period, unless you know the Fed decides to just take it all back and hike interest rates and crash the market and everybody's miserable. That could well be what they're planning on doing. This is another email. I'm a subscriber of your channel and I absolutely love it. Thank you. I'm a blue family here in New Jersey. That means they're Leo. Uh, law enforcement officer. Someone very close to me, a retired uh, Leo, lives very close to McGuire Fort Dix Joint Base here in New Jersey. And this is what he pointed on his FB page tonight. Pretty much where I am, going to be lots of activity at Joint Base, something in the air that Commander in Chief is in Camp David. Anyway, have a good evening. Work in a prayer if you can, night all. He doesn't normally post things like this unless it's big, different out of the normal realm of things. Share it if you want, but keep me anonymous. I'm one of the female preppers. You have been mentioning your videos and I'm not gonna go into um, any more specifics about that person, but I appreciate the information. This is just consistent with a lot of the information we're hearing about military movements around the United States, uh, mobilizing for something or maybe just getting troops ready, getting troops trained, more activity than usual type thing, which makes perfect sense and is consistent with what we're seeing in the news. However, the messages that I'm getting are indicating that the troop deployments are gonna be a lot larger than they're stating. So don't be surprised if next week they say we're sending another 10,000 and the week after that another 10,000 and so on and so forth. Okay, so another one here. So this one says, no names please. I have a little nugget that may be a piece of the puzzle or not. My buddy and I work for a large delivery company in Colorado. He delivers to a military base every day, so he keeps me alert with what's going on. There are several units operating there, like a medical vac unit, striker unit, H60s and H47s. So he witnessed 100 plus APC 
uh, armored personnel carrier type vehicles being outfitted with javelin launchers this past week for an unspecified region. Numerous train cars have been loaded in the last month also and left base for points unknown. Our company is located very close to the runway of another base, so I keep an eye on air traffic in and out. In my opinion, based on what I've witnessed in the last few weeks, there may be H-60s being relocated by C-5s and C-17s. There also seems to be an uptick in aerial spying on the city as I see a spy craft grabbing cell tower data for hours at a time. Okay, just a little bit more information. Now, this one is a bit more concerning. Uh, one of my primary sources on the Ukraine-Russia tensions sent me this information about a nuclear-powered submarine belonging to the U.S. Navy apparently defied warnings to leave Russia's territorial waters, according to the Russian Defense Ministry. Now, of course, the Pentagon denies this claim, and Biden and Putin are mum on the U.S. submarine incident. So what does it all mean? Who knows what it means? Apparently, this individual is referencing a movie called The Bedford Incident with Richard Widmark and Sidney Poitier. Uh, apparently, it was a reverse copy of that movie, which involved a U.S. destroyer playing cat and mouse with a Russian sub in the Arctic, which eventually causes World War III. Well, let's just hope it does not come to that. But well, I don't know what to say, folks. All this information, it just really, really doesn't look good. And it really looks like we are in for some incredibly tumultuous times and uh yeah you know the excitement part of this is kind of over and you really have to ask yourself what are you going to do if all hell breaks loose my main advice right now would be not to freak out not to panic if you've been a prepper if you've been in this survival game for a long time you know what to do Keep stocking your beans, bullets, band-aids, water. Chances are, unless you're right on the front lines of Donbass there between Ukraine and Russia, this thing is not going to spill over to you immediately. But we are going to feel the repercussions of that financially. We are going to see this widening divide between the jabbed and the unjabbed, even though the latter only makes up you know what 15 20 percent in most places even though a lot of people who have taken it have said they're not going to get more boosters and the divide is only going to keep widening and the problem is the big problem is is that only 15 percent of the planet has caught this thing in fact that's probably a very generous estimate according to worldometers and the other calculators it's about 500 million people who have caught this out of close to 8 billion people. So that's not even a tenth. Okay, so really, realistically, you're talking about 85 to 90% of the population who has not been afflicted with this yet. We know it's zoonotic. We know it's going in and out of species. We know it's going to continue to come around in some other form. It's going to rear its ugly head. We know that these measures are likely only the beginning of something that many of us don't want to accept and won't accept. As much as, we, as much as I want to be hopeful for the grand global reopening, something tells me that this whole thing is not over yet. In fact, something tells me that the worst is still yet to come. I don't know what it is about what's going on, but something just doesn't seem right about the whole virus narrative. We know that all caused excess mortalities do corroborate and do map on to the statistics related to death. We know that that's real. Okay. And you can go and you can do the research. I know there's a lot of disagreement about it, but there's still something really suspicious. Why? Oh, why out there in that big giant country in the East that starts with the sea? Why are they so, so scared about letting this thing continue to spread through their population, even though it supposedly has such a low fatality rate? Why are they still crippling their economy? Do they know something that we don't? Who knows? I guess we're all going to find out in a few years, aren't we? Anyways, guys, stay safe. Keep prepping. Stay healthy right now. Your health is your wealth. Stay healthy. Exercise every damn day Eat as healthy as you possibly can. Drink lots of water. Meditate. Fill your head with as many positive ideas as negative ones. Educate yourself. And by God, please do not be a victim of functional 
fixedness. What would MacGyver do with a pair of paracord survival shoelaces? Would he take one strand out and use it to tie up his shoes so he could still run after the bad guys or run from the bad guys? And then he could still have his paracord to use for Tinder, fishing, not Tinder like swipe Tinder, but Tinder as fire starter. Make a fire, make a shelter. Come on, guys. Preparedness and survival is all about thinking outside the box. That's what it's going to come down to. And there's a lot of ways to use a lot of the things that have a specific designated use right now after the shizzy hits the fizzy. Hell, a cardboard box could make a great shelter. Hey, there's a good idea for some of you bushcrafters out there. How about you do a, a cyberpunk dystopian survival episode where you show us how to live in a cardboard box to give us all a glimpse of the future how's that for a depressing end point of this video anyways guys thanks for watching don't forget to like comment subscribe if you enjoy the video canadian prep bro